Welcome to the next lecture of our course Selenium C Sharp.net. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about writing our very first Selenium C Sharp code. And we'll see how we can write an amazing Selenium C Sharp code in just few minutes. So we'll see how we can write that. In our last lecture, we have already talked about how we can install Visual Studio from the complete ground up and also add the Selenium C Sharp reference, which is the Selenium web driver reference within our project. There are even other ways that you can actually use to install Selenium within your project. And the one that we saw in our last lecture, which is by adding the NuGet package way, is the most recommended practice as well. So if you just go to Google and then if you search for selenium.dev, so this is the page where you can actually get to Selenium's web page over here. And then you can see that there is a Selenium web driver. This is the one that we actually started installing in our last lecture. We have not talked about Selenium IDE and Selenium Grid yet, so don't worry about it. We'll be talking about that in our upcoming lectures. But for now, with Selenium web driver, if you wanted to go ahead and download it, you can just go to this downloads over here. And you will see that it's going to show you for all the language binding, C Sharp, Ruby, Java, Python, and JavaScript. And the way you can download this is we just go and click the stable version, which is 4.15 during the time of recording. If I go and click that, you will notice that it is going to be redirecting you to the NuGet.org website. So this website is nothing but the package manager, which is going to hold the Selenium web driver package. So remember, this Selenium web driver package is exactly the same package that we installed in our last lecture as well. So this is the way that you can actually install. And sometimes you may be curious, what is exactly sitting inside this selenium.webdriver package? The way that you can explore this package is going to this open in NuGet package explorer, this particular link. If you go and click that, it will redirect you to the NuGet.info page and it will show you like how the actual package is been written by the developers of Selenium. See, there is a build folder inside the particular NuGet package. There is a library and it is actually holding the uh, webdriver.dll itself. So it is a dynamic link library which is used in Windows operating system. That is what is being used over here. And interestingly, they also have got a folder called as manager. I have not talked about the manager yet. We'll be talking about that in this particular video. The reason why this manager is quite interesting is because before Selenium 4, there was even before 4.02 or 03, there was not this folder available, the manager folder. This is recently added in Selenium. And the way this is becoming more interesting is because you don't really have to necessarily download any drivers. If you remember, in our first lecture, I was telling you that in order for your Selenium code to talk with a browser, you need a driver like for Chrome browser, you require a Chrome driver, Firefox browser, you need a Firefox driver, something like that. All those drivers needs to be explicitly downloaded earlier. But all those things are now being removed and you don't really have to do anything because Selenium has added what is called as a Selenium manager and it does things for you. So this manager, you can see it is applicable for Linux, Mac, and Windows operating system. Uh, within this, you actually can see that there is this Selenium manager package or probably a file, which actually does those magic for you. So this is the one which is a binary file. You can see that there is nothing really interesting there, but this binary file will actually go and download the different drivers required for your project to be executed. That is what is this manager basically. So yeah, this is just like an insight of how your library that you added in our last lecture, which is this one, the Selenium web driver is going to look like. And you see that once I expand this at the moment, we can't see anything over here. Like it has some build file, but it doesn't show you anything interesting. It only shows the web driver DLL file, but there is nothing much. But on the explorer that you just showed, it has got all the details for you. Well, enough about the Selenium web driver itself, like the internals of how the Selenium web drivers is being designed and stuff. But now we're going to start writing our first ever Selenium C sharp code. So what are we trying to write this time? Well, I'm going to write a small pseudo code this time. I'm going to be performing these operations this time. Create a new instance of Selenium web driver, navigate to the URL, maximize the browser window, 
find an element type in the element and click on the element that is what i'm going to be doing so this pseudo code is pretty much exactly applicable for everybody who is going to be writing their first automation test in selenium so this is going to be very very applicable even right now well as that said i'm going to go one by one in this particular line so that you can actually follow along so you can see that there is something called as create a new instance of selenium web driver well even in the diagram that i just showed you that actually has got what is called as a command which is the c sharp code that we are writing it's going to talk with a driver which is the chrome driver or firefox driver depending upon your browser and that driver is going to go and interact with or send a command to the browser the real browser to perform those ui interaction for you so for that we need to first create an instance of what is called as the selenium web driver so the way we can do it is i'm going to write this code called as i and because this is an interface so in c sharp world you need to write i web driver and you can see that this i web driver once i do that it is an interface of the web driver which is going to perform the interaction with the actual browsers that's why it tells you over here as well like defines the interface through which the user controls the browser that is what is i web driver so once i do that you see that there is a scrolly line there which means it is not really exist in the current context of this particular class file so what does that really mean basically if you just add the iweb driver something like this you see that automatically visual studio is adding a reference for you like using openqa.selenium so this is coming because you have added the iweb driver which is required for this particular context this reference is required for you to refer this particular interface so that is the first thing that we need to do so if you probably remove this or comment this particular reference over there like the package then you will see that this particular iref web driver is going to start complaining it's going to tell you that it does not exist in the current context and this can only work while you uncomment this line and you see that this is working fine so this is called is the actual way that you can refer that this is the iweb driver that you're looking for and once this is done i can just say driver is equal to and now i need to interact with the actual browser which is the chrome browser and for interacting the chrome browser i need to actually do what is called as a new keyword and i'm going to call another class file called as chrome driver so this is the one that we need to do and we require a open parenthesis and close parenthesis and a semicolon so that we can call a class over there and once i add this chrome driver you'll notice that we also have got a open qa.selenium.chrome package been added or the namespace is been added because this is the place where the chrome driver actually sits and now we have this and this is the first thing that we we do uh, based on the pseudo code which is create a new instance of selenium web driver we did that successfully which is awesome the next thing we need to do is to navigate to the url so which website are we planning to go this time well i'm going to go to the most famous website of all time which is the google.com web page so this is the page which i really wanted to go so now to do that i'm going to copy this url and i'm going to go to this particular class file and i'm going to say driver so this is the same variable that i'm using for the driver of selenium and i'm going to hit dot and you see that it's going to bring up all the methods which is required but interestingly you can see that these are the only methods which are available in selenium's web driver itself you see that there is a url windows handle to string title switch to quit page source navigate something like that so these are the method that is only available in the driver interface and this is the same method which is going to be used for any driver for that matter for example it can be a firefox driver or edge chrome driver or even safari driver you're going to be using the exact same methods so for navigating to the particular url we're going to be using a method called as navigate pretty straight forward and within this method we also have got a method called as go to url so you can see that a method can also have another method return type and that return type is a i navigation return type and that is what we'll be using over here so i'm going to choose that and i'm going to put a double quotes and i'm going to paste the url that i just copied the google.com page so this is the way that i can navigate to the url so let's see how this code actually works 
So I'm gonna save this whole code and I need to execute this code. So how do I execute this code in Selenium C Sharp .NET? Well, because this is an end unit project, you can't just go and click this run button there. If you just try to do that, you will probably get an error here. Then it will tell you that this is not a project which you can execute just like that because this is a class library project and this open window just appears over here and it will tell you that, see that you can't really run this particular stuff over here. So it's just gonna quit. So let's quit that. So this is not the way that we actually can run the test in Selenium with any unit. Rather, we actually need to do this. We have to go to this test menu over here and you see that there is something called as a test explorer. So please go ahead and choose this test explorer, which is gonna open this test explorer for you. This is the place where our tests are gonna be coming up. You see that there is this test, .NET Selenium, and we have our first test, which is the test one. That is the test that we are gonna be executing, right? So that is the way that we can execute our test in Selenium C Sharp. So now if I try to execute this test by right clicking and hit this run button, this should technically run the test. But while I run this test, so many things are gonna happen behind the scene. The web driver manager, which I was showing you in the package, that web driver manager, which is nothing but this web driver manager, which I was just showing you in the NuGet package, this guy is going to choose like which operating system I'm currently using. So I'm using Windows operating system. So it's gonna go call the Selenium manager over here, the Selenium manager.exe. And then it is gonna download the relevant drivers for me, the Chrome driver for me automatically. And then it's gonna spin up the browser for me. That is what is gonna happen right now. So I'm just gonna right click this test again, and I'm gonna hit this run. So you will notice that for the first time, the test may be slow because it has to go ahead and download all the drivers like Chrome driver, Firefox driver, or Edge driver. So we have actually defined the Chrome driver here. And that's the reason what is happening there. Like it's trying to download all the different drivers for me, like the binary for me from internet on the Chrome driver. And once it is fully downloaded, it is then going to launch the browser for me. So let's see what's really gonna happen. And other thing is like, I also don't have Chrome browser installed within my Windows machine. It's only in the Mac, but not in my Windows machine. So how does Chrome drivers knows that it has to launch the Chrome browser? See that there is a browser just jumping up for us over here. So there is a browser being launched as well. And guess what? It has also navigated to the google.com page for me automatically. If you just notice the color of the Google Chrome is like in blue color here. So it also tells that it's a Google with a Chromium browser. So it's not basically a Chrome browser, rather it is a Chromium browser. So Chromium is the actual parent of all the different browsers based on Google Chrome or Edge Chrome or Brave browsers. So all these browsers actually uses the Chromium project. So if you don't really have a Chrome browser within a machine, the Chrome driver will fall back to the Chromium driver and it just launches the browser. It won't throw you an error. In earlier days of Selenium, it used to throw you an error that there is no Chrome driver, like Chrome browser available for this particular instance. But right now, these errors are not happening because the Chromium browser is the fallback option and it just opens up for you automatically. So now that we have launched the browser, even though we don't really have a Chrome browser, I promised that first time it takes more time, like 57 seconds, Second time, the test should be very fast. So if you just right click and run this test, this time you will notice that the browser just launched instantly and the test got completed in 4.8 seconds. The reason why it happened is because now the Selenium manager knows that this particular driver is already there for us to work with and it just opens up the browser for you. Super cool, right? Now that is interesting. So we have did that. So guess what, in Visual Studio, the trick is that every time you drag it, you see that there are some menus coming up over here, like all these things. I prefer to put this test explorer on the left-hand side like this, so it just sticks over there so that it just don't keep hovering around my window. That's what I really do. So I suggest you to do that as well, like based on your personal preference. Uh, yeah, so that is how you write this particular code. And now, once it is done, like once we have navigated to this particular page, we then are going to 
maximize the window. How do we actually maximize the window? Well, the way you can do it is you need to call another method in Selenium, which is called as manage method. So this will instruct the driver to change its settings. So I'm going to call this manage method. And within this manage, you can see that we have what is called as a window option. So this window is the current window that is being shown for you during the browser came up. But you can also see there are some other methods like cookie, network, uh, something like that, like logs. So, I mean, we'll go about the logs and network later on in this particular series. These are something amazing. But for now, we just are going to stick with window. And then I'm going to put another dot in this particular property. And you see that it is basically a maximize operation that I need to do. So I'm going to call this maximize method. So this is how you can actually maximize a window in Selenium. So now if I run this test, you saw that last time the window was like a small window when it appeared, but now it is going to be like a maximized window. See, see that the first time it is just small window and now it has maximized automatically because we have instructed to maximize the window. The last three operations that we need to do is I'm going to just run this a bit quicker because we'll be talking about that later on in this particular series. But in order for you to do that, the first thing which I'm going to do it is I'm going to go and identify the Google page. I need to type some value there. So the way I can do it is I can just right click over here and I can just go and do an inspect. By doing that, what I'm actually doing it is I'm actually locating the particular element. Once again, just don't worry about all these things. We are going to be talking about locating the element and why we need to do all these things later in this particular course. But for now, I'm just going to write this code a bit faster just to give you some glimpse like how it can be done. So I'm going to be writing or calling another interface called as i web element which is web element and in this web element i'm going to say driver dot find element so i'm going to basically finding an element in the browser by its name so i'm going to call a name method you see that these are something which we have not discussed so far and i'm going to give a name as q so you can see that Currently, this particular text box has got a name as Q over there. And that is what I'm trying to do in here. And I'm actually going to perform some operation like typing into that particular element. So I'm going to say web element dot send keys. And this is the method which performs an operation of sending a keyboard keystroke into that particular element. So that is what I'm doing in here. So I'm just going to do selenium. So that's what I'm sending. And then I need to perform a click operation on an element. So I don't really have any element. Rather, I'm actually going to do a web element dot send keys. And I'm going to do an enter. So basically, if you just go to your page over here, if you just for selenium, you see that there are so many things that come up. And then you need to hit an return key in your page, which is going to bring all the selenium details over here so that is what i'm going to be doing over here so i'm just going to say send keys and then there is a property called as keys which is again going to be from the selenium as well which is going to represent the key of your keyboard sending to your browser so i'm going to call this keys and i'm going to say return so i have did quite a lot of things over here i have not explained this part a bit which is going to be something we'll be discussing in our next lecture but now if I try to run this test, you will see all the magic's going to happen in the browser for you. There we go. And there we go. We have Selenium being searched by Google. So this is how we can actually perform all the intended operation, which is mentioned over here in our pseudocode. But now you have gotten a glimpse of how to write a simple test in Selenium.